The name of the band is Rikers, and the name of the album is Islands. We're with them today at the Ottawa Blues Fest. How is Ottawa treating you guys? Good, yeah. as always. <laughs> like it, actually, yeah. Yeah, it's our first time at Blues Fest, but we've been in Ottawa a bunch. Yeah, so we yeah. should mention right off the jump, you guys are from Ontario, Southern Ontario. Yeah. Yeah. And you all live in Peterborough or have lived in Peterborough? Yeah. yeah. Uh, we have all, when the band started, we all lived in Peterborough. Okay. Uh, a few of the guys came from the Hamilton area to go to university in mm -hmm. Peterborough. And uh, Russ and I are the only Peterborough natives in the okay. band. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's a big college town and, you know, you get a bunch of students there and that's how we all met. They all worked at the same place. But now uh, Alex has moved away to Toronto, and the rest of us are still living in Peterborough. So okay, it's a Toronto-Peterborough thing. For our international fans, we should let them know, Peterborough is fairly close to Toronto. Yeah. Everyone knows where Toronto is, and uh, that's in Ontario, Canada. So how long have you guys been together in this incarnation of the band? Because I know that you've all had musical paths prior to coming together. It's been about three, two, two, two or three years now. Yeah. Verging on three. I think. It's a bit of a, it's a foggy memory because yeah. it started with uh, just Russ and I. Mm -hmm. And uh, we had been in other bands together and then he was in a band that I wasn't in and I was in a band that he wasn't in and that kind of stuff. And uh, when we got back together to make music, we decided to do something totally different. And we went for like mm -hmm. computer-based stuff and synth and drum machine. And it was just the two of us writing songs. And then... Gradually, one by one, we brought in the next person. So Alex came in and he started playing keyboards. And then Colin and Kurt joined. And so it's hard to pinpoint when the band actually started. Mm -hmm. um, the project started probably three years ago. Yeah. And then I don't know the date that Kurt joined, but he was <laughs> yeah, the last to join. And since then, it, it's felt like a real band. Yeah, it felt yeah. like a project before yeah. everyone was here. Yeah. 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 So you're complete now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, it's one thing for us anyways. It's one thing to write. Uh, music on a computer mm -hmm. it's another thing to try and translate that live mm -hmm. or or make a connection with people mm -hmm. using a laptop there are artists that can do it mm -hmm. uh, and I totally respect that but it's not for us and we tried it a couple of shows mm -hmm. and it just felt like that it was too it was too cold the, the connection yeah. between yeah. us and the audience wasn't there yep. and so when we finally had the full band that's when we felt like okay this is what the band is supposed to be we wanted a band we wanted a group of guys to yeah. you know, really be cohesive so. now i read somewhere that you all collaborate on the writing is that is that true yeah it's quite yeah. the democratic how that, process how does that go like that's, Rough. that's a lot of creative. <laughs> it's like pulling to, teeth sometimes. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, we're all influenced by different kinds of music too, so uh, yeah. it's a bit of a battle in there sometimes. But I mean, that's what Rikers is. Like the end product of that, the democracy that we've made is mm -hmm. is what we are, and it's it's great. We're, we're happy with what the you know the outcome is. So now we should talk about your influences because I find it interesting. I read, I've got I got a list of them right here. There's uh, there's New Order. Early U2, Echo and the Bunnymen, Everly Brothers, Psychedelic Furs, Springsteen, In Excess, Human League. I've seen all those bands live. That's how old I am. Well, lucky you. <laughs> Seriously. So how is it that you've managed, you guys have, there is definitely an 80s sound in your music, but not in a weird cover band kind of way. You've totally made it your own, and you've sort of modernized that 80s sound. Was, were you striving for that, or is it just sort of something that happened? Yeah, I mean, to hear you articulate it like that makes me very happy mm -hmm. because okay. that's that feels a little bit like mission accomplished. Yeah. What we did not want to be is a time capsule band mm -hmm. where everything from the artwork to the way that we dress to the music and the way it's, the record is produced is supposed to be like it's 1987 or mm -hmm. something. It's Because the 80s, they get brushed with this, this giant brush, but it is a rich decade. Oh, I uh, know. I full of all, yeah, <laughs> full of all different stuff. Yeah, and so exactly. When we say we're an '80s inspired band, it, that runs the gamut from like our keyboard player loves like Ultravox, Flock of Seagulls, Human League, mm -hmm. and then on the guitar end of it, you have more like In Excess and uh, The Edge and stuff like that. And then vocally, for me, it's like Billy Idol, mm -hmm. The Cult, Michael Hutchins. Mm -hmm. So we're pulling from different areas to make this '80s inspired yet still modern and us yeah. kind of thing mm -hmm. yeah yeah well you've achieved you've achieved it and you've achieved it on a level that i've been fans of all these influences and i don't feel like you're just trying to duplicate them well that's good which is great yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. now i also read that you guys wrote a tremendous number of songs before you narrowed it down for the album 
Yeah. It's kind of part of the democratic writing process. Uh-huh. You get How many so songs many. were there? Well, there was about 200, I think. Like, if you Maybe include, like, you start including, like, demos, like, yeah. acoustic stuff, it, it gets up to close to 200. You probably. know that's not normal, right? <laughs> Bands that we don't have all the guys <laughs> writing the music don't yeah, have that really. many songs to pick from. Yeah, <laughs> but I I agree with you. It's not normal. It's mm-hmm. not normal to have your drummer be a songwriter. Yeah. It's not normal to have your bass player be bringing not just bass parts, but, like, fully realized demos that he's done mm-hmm. on his computer that have guitar cool. parts mm-hmm. and keyboards. And this is your bass player bringing that to the table. Yeah. So it's a wonderful thing to have. Oh, for um, sure. And I would not trade that in. But it's not without its... It's bumps because well, it's tough to pick when you've got something to pick exactly. from. You can't do a two hundred song record. <laughs> yeah, obviously. <laughs> yeah. But how now? How did you? How did you narrow it down? Like, is it a demo? Like, is it a democratic process, or did you all sort of agree? Yeah, these are the ones. These are the songs. I think generally, it, we all know when there's a good song. Mm-hmm. Like, it, it kind of clicks, and even when we're playing it, we kind of look at each other like, "This is the, this is a good one." Because mm-hmm. like you know, we we write a lot of songs that are great, but they're not and they're not exactly what we need at the time you know yeah. we, we try and write like certain st- kinds of songs and yeah. uh yeah i think it like i said it just it just clicks and we just know and that's it's usually a, a fan favorite of all of ours so yeah. you know so those songs that you didn't use do you just sort of bank those revisit them or is the next album going to be totally nope. different i don't know what the album's the next album's going to be like okay. i i we never stop writing, mm-hmm. uh, and I, I don't want to speak for the other guys, but as a lyricist, if I stopped writing, I think I should just probably give up, mm-hmm. because life keeps happening. Mm-hmm. It's not like everything that I ever wanted to sing about happened two years ago. Mm-hmm. So songs that I wrote two years ago still have merit to me and still have meaning because I'm connected to those experiences, but I'm still experiencing new things every day, so I need to be writing every day. Mm-hmm. But musically speaking, there's a lot of cool ideas that yeah, never sure. got the time or chance to develop. Yeah. Um, so we, we go back and listen to that uh, quite often. Mm-hmm. And I think, I would imagine the next record will be a mix of some of those ideas and some new things. Mm-hmm. Now with so many of you sort of participating in the creative process of writing, would you say you guys are more the type of band where you're the poets, that that's the focus, the writing is the key? Or do you find that your time on stage when you're engaged with your audience is when you really sort of reach the moment? Of the two, which is the, the sort of bigger experience for you guys as a band, or does it differ from member to member? I think playing live, we all enjoy a lot more than <laughs> than writing, because we said sometimes it can be like pulling teeth. But, uh, yeah. yeah, I mean, there's nothing better than playing live. That's my opinion. Yeah, I agree. Um, I feel like there are songwriters that I love and respect that write songs that I can't sing along to. Mm-hmm. And with those artists, that has no bearing whether I enjoy it or not. Mm -hmm. Um, And then there are other artists, some which I enjoy and some which I do not enjoy, that write songs that mean very little but are very easy to sing along with. Yeah. And again, like speaking from a lyricist, vocalist point of view, I I want to find that middle ground where I can sing something that people can sing back to me, but it means something to me and it means something to them. Mm Uh, it's not throwaway lyrics, but it's also not so lyrical, and there's not so many words, yeah. and it's so difficult that it, it could never be repeated well, back. Well, someone like Gord Downey's been accused of just being himself, into himself, thinking too right. hard, and it's all about the poetry of the mm-hmm. lyrics. It's tough. It's tough as an audience member, because, you know, some of the hip songs are really, you can sing along to them, you can get right into it, yeah. but, you know... Gord Downey seems to have taken that other avenue. So, do you find that are you watching the audience? Are you sort of feeding off their energy? Some bands like to, some bands don't like to think about that. I definitely am. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Cuz uh we have parts in our songs that are not nailed down. So there's there's parts in the songs where every night the guys don't know what I'm going to do. And that's that's on purpose. That's so that I can be able to respond to what the the audience is giving yeah. me or or not giving me, yeah. um, and I think that that sort of unpredictability is needed in rock and roll. I, so I don't too. want the whole set to be unpredictable, but I don't want the whole set to be the same night after night because mm-hmm. the audience isn't the same, the city is not the same, Absolutely. what's happening in the world is not the same. So I, it can't be, be so by the book that I know exactly what I'm going to say in between the songs yeah. or in a breakdown. Mm-hmm. It's, there has to be some. 
spontaneity. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, exactly. I just had a conversation the other day about how when I go to a concert, I want to experience something other than the album. Sure. Like if I mm-hmm. love the album, I want to love the performance for a totally different reason. I want yeah. it to be a different experience. Yeah, exactly. Do you make a conscious effort in advance? Do you plan, you know, how are we going to make this different? I, think like, that, I know that you've got your spontaneous elements where you gauge the audience yeah. reaction, but are there any things that you sort of say, okay, well, let's make sure that this is different or that's different? I think when you're playing a show, you want to put on a show. It's not about just playing your CD. Yeah. It's about actually putting on a show and, and you know, having some theatrics on stage to, I mean, it's, it's your time to exaggerate what you do. Yeah. I mean, you can just go up there and people would just be bored if you're just playing your song straight through. So yeah. you need theatrics. You need, I like to see that in a band. That's cool. my favorite. My favorite bands live or like I love watching old videos of Bowie and stuff he's so theatrical and he yeah. really hooks you into the, yeah, exactly. into the show it's like that's what that's the best for me cool mm-hmm. all right one last question for each of you right off the top of your head dream venue go Hammersmith <laughs> dream venue Bowery Ballroom all right there you go tonight the Ottawa Blues Fest check them out